Hello, anatomist and physiologist. Let's be physiologists for just a few minutes here. Um, I'm taking us back in time. So we're going back to our beginning presentation where we first talked about integumentary physiology. And I did want to fill in just a few blanks. So we have done a really good job of talking about protection, how this system is protecting the body. But let's fill in a few other places. So let's think about that sensory job just a little bit more. When we think about this, we can include the hair root plexus. This is the nerve that's sticking up at the base of the hair follicle. It's there in the hair papilla. It's part of the hair papilla. So we talked about when your hair is moved by an insect, you know there's a bug on your arm, right? We've mentioned already the Meisner corpuscle. We saw this in the dermis, and this is going to detect touch. We have also Piscinian corpuscle which is going to detect vibration. We've picked out, talked already about the Merkel cell in the um, epidermis. We saw that in the stratum basale layer, which is also helping to detect touch. And then we're gonna have pain and temperature receptors in the cutaneous membrane as well. So of course, as humans, we're very familiar with that. We're very familiar with that. When we talk about thermoregulation, we're talking both about keeping the body warm and keeping the body cool. So here, in terms of like keeping the body cool, we have the evaporative cooling that we saw from the eccrine sweat gland. We get um, dilation of blood vessels in order to dissipate heat out into the environment. We kind of referred to that when we talked about skin pigmentation. In order to warm the body, keep the body warm, you know, we can think about the hypodermis as providing insulation. And then we can also do a constriction of the blood vessels so that you do not lose as much heat to the environment. So again, we kind of referred to that when we talked about how hemoglobin or dermal blood supply can affect your skin color. And the last of these to look at is this vitamin D3 um, synthesis. And what I want to say here is that this is going to be important in absorption of calcium. And then the calcium ion is critical for healthy bones. So we have this direct connection between a healthy integumentary system and a healthy skeleton. So let's take a look at vitamin D synthesis in a little bit more detail. And this actually begins with UV radiation. So we get UV light to the epidermis, triggers a steroid that is in the epidermis to turn into another molecule called coal calciferol. So just to be clear, you know, all of this is taking place at the epidermis. 
cold calciferol then gets released into the bloodstream and makes its way to the liver. And then it becomes converted to calcidiol. This molecule calcidiol becomes at the kidney becomes called calcitriol. Calcitriol is just basically another name for vitamin D3. Calcitriol is another name for vitamin D3. And in the future, we're going to talk about it as a hormone that the kidney makes. The significance is that your calcitriol or your vitamin D3 is going to talk to the small intestine and then it's going to trigger calcium absorption. So if you are not getting enough sunlight, then your body is not producing the calcitriol or vitamin D3 that you need. So you can be eating mad amounts of calcium, but it's not going to be available in the body to become part of your um, bone structure. So what we see is that the calcium is going to make bones hard. It's going to increase your, um, um, wait a minute, let me not say that. Calcium makes your bones hard. The vitamin D3 then is going to trigger the calcium absorption and it can increase your immunity and um, make it easier for you to fight off bacterial and fungal infections. So vitamin D3 is important because it's helping you absorb calcium, which you need for your bones, but it's also helping to boost your immune system just a little bit. Now you're getting the vitamin D3 then from sun exposure. My understanding is like 10 minutes face and hands is all you need for like your daily sun exposure. So you don't have to lay out in the sun because remember we have to balance this with risk of skin cancer. Our foods now, some of our foods are fortified with vitamin D, especially like milk, because that's a source of calcium. So we wanna make sure our kids are getting their vitamin D and their calcium all in one go. And of course you can also take it as supplements. Um, so that's another source as well. All right, we have one video left. Stay tuned. As always, take care of yourselves and each other.